In 1992, fighting broke out in Abkhazia between Georgian and Abkhaz forces. The worst part of the war lasted for 13 months, in which 10 to 15,000 lives were lost, according to the Red Cross. Now, Georgian-Abkhaz relations are defined as a frozen conflict, in which no peace treaty has been signed, but no armed conflict is taking place. Abkhazia is currently a de facto state, where it operates as a separate nation, but is not internationally recognized. Our project was concentrated on identity, and we decided to look at it through the lens of education, uh, because it is a tool that brings together different aspects of society. And actually going to Georgia and to Abkhazia and talking to all these people gave us a personal look, and some of the interviews were quite emotional. We had our interviews with government officials, academics, NGOs, and students to better understand what forms the identity of both sides almost 25 years after the war. Spending a lot of time in Georgia, I was able to hear the Georgian narrative about the, the conflict in Abkhazia and, and their perspective on the whole event. Um, so going to Abkhazia was very interesting for me because I was able to hear Abkhaz voices and their stories about the conflict. Uh, one region that was especially interesting for me was the Gali region, which is right as soon as you cross the border um, from Georgia into Ab Abkhazia. And this is the area where mo the, most of the ethnic Georgian minorities live. And as we were driving through this area, it almost seemed like the war had happened yesterday. The region came up in many of our interviews because of the problematic situation. Education in Abkhazian schools, including those in the Gali region, is now completely in Russian. We found that Georgian officials are against this current policy because it keeps Georgian students from getting an education in their native language. But Abkhaz see Russian education as a way to integrate the Georgian-speaking minority into the greater Abkhaz society. This is just one example of the contradictory narratives we heard in Georgia and Abkhazia. But for sure that they have a negative attitude towards uh, Georgians. Uh, for that, most of the scholars argue that they are so much, the Abkhazians are so much obsessed uh, with their negative attitude towards uh, Georgians that uh, they did not uh, or do not notice how um, the Russification is intensified in uh, Abkhazia. We found that these contradictory narratives are mainly being constructed through family, media, and education. Well, I, I, my hypothesis is that this conflict uh, is not going to be resolved uh, in the near future since the narratives are completely opposite. One side isn't really listening to the other side and vice versa, which is why the conflict is getting even more deeper and the cleavages are getting even greater, unfortunately. Surprisingly, as big of a role as religion plays in Georgian and Abkhaz lives, we found that it doesn't have a big influence in this conflict. So we have the Abkhazian church as subordinate to the Georgian Orthodox church, and this is not something that Abkhazians are satisfied with. They want their independent church, and there were many attempts to uh, gain independence, but uh, due to warm relations between the Russian Orthodox church and the Georgian, uh, church this is currently not possible. At the same time, the Georgian church rarely comments on this issue because of its close ties to the Russian Orthodox Church. In Abkhazia, we were able to visit the famous monastery, Novi Afon, which gives an interesting insight into Abkhaz traditions and spiritual life. While in Georgia, 85% of the population is Orthodox Christian, in Abkhazia, only 60% identify as Orthodox Christians, while 16% are Muslim and around 10% pagan. The short tour around Abkhazia gave us a look at the country's cultural history. But the future of this nation now lies in the hands of the youth. We went to visit the only university in Abkhazia, 
Upcaz State University. The campus itself is representative of the rest of Abkhazia, with only one part of it renovated. Like many other buildings around the country, it is a constant reminder of the conflict. We met with the students from the International Relations Department. From their interview, we found that they were very open to the outside world, but also committed to the idea of Abkhaz independence. Their opinions on relations with Georgia and Georgian people were quite different. It would be very difficult uh, to um, make um, uh, to uh, to make friends, uh, I should say, with them uh, without the recognition of the government, because uh, the war was uh, for our uh, independence, for our sovereignty. We have a lot of people uh, living here, Georgians, and I have my be uh, my best friend is Georgian, and uh, I was the maid of honor on her wedding day, and she married uh, a Abkhazian guy, and it was great. There is still not strong international recognition of Abkhazian independence. Therefore, these students' diplomas are often useless outside of their home country. My main concern was the diploma issue and the recognition of diplomas in Georgia. This, is a, this topic is quite important because it has a number of parallels, for example, in Crimea, where uh, Crimean residents had the same problems with the Ukrainian authorities. Uh, and as far as I know uh, from the interviews and from the small research, this topic is quite complicated because uh, a number of evil difficulties with bureaucratical procedures that uh, Abkhazians have in Georgia uh, distances these uh, nations from each other. Even when Abkhaz and Georgian students are brought together through limited exchange programs, they often refuse to talk about their common traumatic past. And one of the, re one of the researchers said that it's like a big elephant, a big white elephant, he said. In a small room, he used that metaphor to explain, why don't you want to speak? You've lost your father's uncles. They said, no. These students have not lived through the conflicts themselves. This is why history education plays a significant role in identity formation. The more I researched, the more I realized how history is important, so how the things came about. And uh, that's why my shift is focusing uh, even more to historical background, since without understanding history, we cannot understand current narratives. Through our interviews, we found that Georgian textbooks have become less politicized than they were in the 90s, yet they are still ethnocentric. In Abkhazia, there is only one history textbook available to school children, which explicitly points a finger to Georgians as the oppressors of the Abkhaz society. The Soviet times are also controversial, as the threat to Abkhaz identity was always present in one way or another. If to speak about the Soviet Union times, it was a lot of uh, bad um, events for our uh, nationality, for our country uh, in particular. And my grandfather uh, finished, a, he didn't finish school by the way, he studied only seven classes, but still he had to uh, study Georgian instead of his own language. They were forbidden. To, uh, to, uh, to study Abkhazian. If you want to hear this, of course, and it's in textbooks, like in our textbooks. Um, Abkhaz people view themselves as victims of the Soviet rule and that, that is somehow unites them um, for their identity formation and they also view themselves as victims of the, of the war and, um, and that they keep uh, this memory of the war, which happened like about 20 years ago, they keep this memory fresh because they it's very important for their identity. The reason why I think so is because, as, as opposed to Georgians, where I think this notion of victimhood does not play as much role, is because Georgia is a recognized state, it's recognized by everybody, so they don't have to fight for their identity as fiercely as the Abkhaz people. We were not born in this time, maybe, but, um, you know, uh, our fathers, our uh, grandfathers, and um, I think all, um, almost all members of our families were uh, involved in this war. And uh, that's why uh, these uh, events are fresh in our minds, too. I remember my father who participated telling me how his best friend uh, was torn apart by a bullet that hit him while he was jumping, seeking like a place to hide, you know? And such things just can't be forgotten, and I hope they will not forget. In Georgia, most people were further removed from the conflict. So it's not spoken about as often as it is in Abkhazia, where nearly every family was touched by the war. 
The personal aspect makes the wounds hard to heal. Life in Sukhum goes on despite their isolation. People in the streets seem happy and are getting by just fine with their current state. The youth continue to carry on the claim of Abkhaz independence. Reintegration with Georgia does not look to be in the future of Abkhazia, but reconciliation seems possible if both sides are willing to put forth the effort. This trip to Georgia and Abkhazia allowed us to see and experience firsthand the difficulties which are faced on both sides of the conflict. Being able to hear those stories made the lack of communication between the two sides seem more tragic for us. Abkhazia faded from our view across the dilapidated bridge linking it to Georgia. We were left hoping that the gap between Georgians and Abkhazians will eventually be repaired. Shut up, Sandra. Must I hear a good